The following New Energy Profile is sponsored by Remington. How much are we willing to do to survive? How much are we willing to fight? There's this basic human instinct that we all have that we want to live. And we have to prepare our mind and our hearts for that particular moment of truth when we're face to face with a threat. Because if we haven't prepared our minds, if we haven't prepared our skill set, then what do we have to fight with? Where people feel the safest, are they really? Feelings aren't facts. Just because you feel safe, it doesn't mean that you are safe. I am the owner and CEO of Archangel Tactical, LLC, and the founder of the Get a Grip Personal Defense and Firearms Training Program. By the time you press out and fire, you may or may not have an opportunity to get the first shot off. But if you're already here, 0.5 seconds, lead with your eyes, boom. We like to use actual events that have occurred in the news, so we'll show the clip. We'll show that home invasion or that thing that happened at the gas station or some type of carjacking, what have you, and then we will recreate a scenario in the shoot that person can work through using good safe gun handling skills, good technique, teach them how to utilize cover, and also have them successfully navigate that situation in the ideal manner in which it could unfold in real life. GRIP is a four-stage training acronym that we use in each level of the programs, and the G stands for Get Real About Potential Threats. We want each of these people to have a realistic perspective of the threats that they may be up against. The R in our training acronym is Rely on Instinct. So teaching people how to rely on their better judgment, how to listen to that still small voice inside of them that prompts them that something might be wrong. Maybe it's nothing, but maybe it's the thing that might threaten their life. The I stands for invest in your protection. I encourage my students to actually budget in for personal defense every month. And the P stands for prepare to survive. Now, yes, preparing to survive does involve the physical application of skill. Having something to fight with within an arm's reach is very important. But the mental component of that, the psychological component of that is, I feel, the most important because your mind is your primary weapon. Even the best training in the world, the best shooter in the world, if you do not have your mind prepared to take a life, if necessary, to protect your own or someone that you love, it's futile. So when there's a critical dynamic incident and there's an emergency, there's no time to explain. There's no time to invent a plan. I had a not so great experience back in 2007 and I experienced what domestic violence was like. Whenever there's a violent encounter that's particularly unexpected, you're gonna experience a lot of things. Now, in your conscious mind, you won't understand what's going on, but all you will remember is how you felt in that moment. For me, I remember the auditory exclusion, that ringing in my ears and all other sound blocked out except for the loud sound of my own heartbeat. I remember the tunnel vision being very focused on very, very small things. And also, I remember just feeling like I was suspended in midair and I couldn't breathe. It was relatively humiliating to have circumstances like that, being an educated woman with a great family and a great upbringing, thinking, this can't be my life. From that day forward, I told myself, this will never happen to you again. After going through a divorce and living in a new area of town, I realized that with the rising amount of violent crime against women, it was probably about time that I learned how to be my own method of personal defense. And then I realized how many of my own family members, colleagues, and friends had this illusion of safety. Sometimes people ask me, well, wow, you've, you've come so far, you're kind of a different person than you were before. And I just tell them, no, I'm not a different person, I'm just a better person. Because I've taken those experiences that I've had and I've really turned them into something that's, that's cultivated a whole different level of knowledge for me. Yeah, I've never been involved in combat on a battlefield overseas. I've never been involved in combat chasing down, you know, someone on the drug task force of my local SWAT team or law enforcement unit. But you know what? That day, close quarters combat came to my home. Close quarters combat came into an environment where my first line of defense turned on me. There's this element of empowerment that, you know, women like me can be duped into those situations as well. And women like me every day across this country are living and fighting to reestablish their life and to start their life over in a safe environment. You have to prepare their minds for what they're going to learn. You have to show them a need 
for what they're learning. So I think translating that to the students, whether it's a man, a woman, or a young person trying to learn to shoot, I think it's really important for them to be able to fully understand the reasons why we're doing what we're doing. With the right kind of influence, the right kind of education and encouragement and turning, you know, mistakes or bad experiences into little victories and triumphs, yeah, it's a personal journey for every female, but let's be honest, I mean, if she can learn how to shoot and protect herself along the way, she's going to be an even better woman.